Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I do these videos just to educate women more on their bodies, hormones, and how they can use their whole food nutrition to match with your physiology to get and keep a better result. Tonight I'm gonna to be talking about intermittent fasting for women in menopause. Um, I do cover some of this information in my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is on Amazon, and I do have a podcast, The Female Health Solution, um, which is on all places podcast. But a few things when we talk about Intermittent fasting for menopause is that a lot of times women who have hormonal differences, and this is even aside from the regular shift and change in hormonal pattern that women have, they're not taking that into account when following any type of hormonal or intermittent fasting pattern, so you're not getting the most optimal result for you. So the, the thing to really look at here is, okay, what's going on in my body? Where am I at? And what do I really need to apply for my system specifically for really the best results? So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I do have a webinar coming up. I'm going to put a link in the comments below for you to click on, sign up for the webinar. It is totally free. I'm going to be diving into the four steps that you need for fat loss in menopause. And this is also applicable if you're in perimenopause, if you've had a hysterectomy, all these other things, right? Um, this is also really important for women who are actually on birth control as well because the effect of hormonal birth control on your system mutes a lot of that ebb and flow of hormone throughout the month, which means it's even more important for you to take these hormonal considerations into account when applying different nutrition for metabolism tactics, energy, performance, all that stuff, right? But if you have a question on that specifically, you can let me know. But um, I, in this we the webinar, so you would still learn a lot from the webinar in terms of what your body's doing hormonally. So I'll put that link below. You can click and sign up, share with your friends because again, these are things that women, women should know. Women should know, right? I, ugh, half of the population on the planet has hormonal as a female. So, oh, okay. Sorry, don't, I'm not getting mad. I'm not getting mad. <laughs> these are... These are the things that frustrate me. I had somebody, this is a side note totally, but I had somebody ask me today, they were like, how do you stay motivated and all these things? And I was like, I literally wake up every day and I go on my phone. And that like, it, it just like fuels the fire for good Lord, this has to change. Holy crap, women's health is abysmal in this country and around the world. Jeez, I can't believe women are not told these basic things about their human physiology. And I'm no different. It's only because I went through this extensive training and I got certified in Eastern medicine specializing in fertility and hormone issues for women. <gasps> it shouldn't take this like massive extensive degree and continuing education to really understand what's going on, right? Like you live in this body, you should know what's going on. <sighs> Sorry, I'm going on a little rant here, but so these are the things that keep me motivated. It's because there's crap information out there for women or there's not information out there for women and women's health is terrible a lot of the time. It, it, it really is. So my goal is to educate and empower women to really understand and learn more about their bodies, how they work and function so that when you know better, you can do better. It's not that women aren't trying. It's not that we're not doing things, right? We're just trying things and they're not the right things for our bodies. We're following the wrong map. We're following a map made for men. So all I'm doing is sharing this info to show you the right map for your body, right? And start this conversation and start educating and informing, which empowers, because when you know better, you can do better. I get questions from women all over the world. I really do. I get emails from women in different countries. Um, some of them it's really fun because I'll get an email from a country and I'm like, I got to look up where hungry is. I... I think I know. Huh? I, huh? It's like embarrassing. I, I don't I don't know where some of those these places really are in the world. Mm -hmm. Or when women ask me questions, you know, nutritionally, because again, I work with women all over the world and they'll ask me questions about specific foods and I have to Google the food because I don't know what it is because I, I live in Minnesota. <laughs> so I'm like, I can help. Just give me a minute to figure out what, what this is, you know? <laughs> um, so there's that. Anyway. Um, so you're not alone in your quest for more information for your body, for your health, for your hormones. You're, you are definitely not alone. So when we're talking about intermittent fasting for menopause, one of the things to really take into account here is that your hormones are different. It's tougher for you to get to fat burning. Your body wants to store more fat. Stress is going to impact your body 
in a bigger way, in a bigger negative way than it did before. And it's a lot harder to build and maintain lean muscle. So going into that, know that if you just are trying to lose weight and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna start intermittent fasting, that seems to work for people, I'm just gonna try it. And you don't prime your body first, you're, you're not gonna get the right result, even if you're doing these little tips here. Okay, so there's, there's protein pacing, all these other things. And again, I'm gonna talk about that on the webinar, specifically what that is, what that looks like, getting the right nutrients in first. So that's you know a great tip, sign up for the webinar. And I'll put that link below. But when you do start intermittent fasting and doing it correctly for your body and system, you are looking for making sure you're getting enough snacks in. Now that might sound counterintuitive. It might sound like, well, if I'm fasting, I shouldn't have snacks, right? Nope, you will need snacks. You will need snacks to tease your digestive system, to keep your blood sugars in check, and to make sure your body is not getting too stressed out. Because again, the stressed out body, it has a negative effect on your metabolism. You can have plain, you can have tea or plain coffee, right? <clears throat> I don't like plain coffee. I'm gonna drink it if I have to, but I like foofy coffee. If you like plain coffee, cool, then this is gonna be great for you. But the other thing you need to make sure of, besides having you know liquid here, you need to have a lot of fluid, a lot of hydration, lots of water, because you do get some hydration from your food. So when you're not eating full meals, then you're missing out on that hydration, which means you really need to up your fluids overall. Getting more rest. This, this would mean going when you're fasting, going to bed earlier, you know, letting yourself sleep in, getting a nap if you need it, or even just extra rest time, because that's going to really allow your body to go fully through the process it needs to without that excess stress. Getting more electrolytes in, making sure your system has enough minerals for it to work better. Flooding your body with all these other nutrients without kicking off digestion is the key, right? And then adaptogens. Again, manage and mitigate stress as much as possible. So here's my impression of the body under stress, right? It's gonna, you know, they're like, oh, stress is starting, stress is starting, oh, it's starting to rise, starting to rise, stress is getting out of control. Adaptogens, come in, and it mitigates that stress. Just like that, it happens just, just like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's, that's an example of how that would work. But a lot of times women who are noticing that stress or if you're like, oh, I'm having a hard time. Oh, no, no, I'm just like, you feel it, right? And sometimes it's your mental capacity is different. Sometimes it's your energy output is different with that stress, right? You get that adaptogen in and you'll notice it within 15, 20 minutes. Things start to feel different and work different. Um, and what is foofy coffee? <laughs> That's what my husband calls it. Because he drinks not just plain coffee. He drinks liquid tar. It's disgusting. I'm going to do a video on coffee with him. I'm going to see if he'll do it this weekend. He is hilarious on videos. If you haven't seen me and him on videos, go to my YouTube, which is just Dr. Beth Westy. Oh, my God. He kills me. It's so funny because he's just so funny. But um, without meaning to be, without meaning to be. But he calls my coffee foofy coffee because I will, um, like, I make a coffee shake in the morning. I use coffee and I put coconut oil and almond milk and protein, chocolate protein powder and all these things. And it's so delicious, right? Or if I just have a cup of coffee, I use, like, these super fancy creamers. I love Khalifa. Um, it's the, like, is it almond or um, Khalifa? It's a dairy-free creamer. There's, like, a... There's the picture on the front. I can't remember what the exact, it's caramel pecan maybe. There's a little like a pecan nut and I think a caramel square on the front of the bottle. Anyway, so it's like, he calls it foofy. Like, oh, like latte, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, I, like, I just make it at home, right? I don't, but he drinks, like makes cowboy coffee, which is in a French press. But the, the joke is, is like for cowboy coffee, if you're making cowboy coffee, you have so many grounds that you can put a spoon in the French press without like putting the topper on or anything. You put a spoon in it and the spoon stands up on its own, then it's enough grounds. If it doesn't stand up on its own, it's not enough coffee grounds. It's literally the strongest coffee ever. It is liquid tar and it, it hurts my feelings almost. It's so strong. So I actually will water down the coffee <laughs> that he makes and I just drink regular coffee. Anyway, so yeah, so that's my foofy coffee. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. 
Excellent question. Thank you for asking, Anna. Um, but yeah, but the last thing, adaptogens. Getting enough adaptogens in, helping that mitigate stress. Sometimes it's really helpful to get adaptogens in in the morning and evening because you and your body's resting. That goes along with the rest. If you're going, going, going all day and you took those adaptogens earlier in the day, that's great. But any supplement or anything like that in your system, it will last maximum 12 hours. That's why most high quality vitamins, multivitamins, they'll have you take them twice a day because it only lasts, you only get that influx of nutrient for 12 hours. So if you take it at 7 a.m., you'll need to take it at 7 p.m. Why? Because when you're sleeping and resting, your whole body's job is to repair everything and regenerate everything. The better it can do that, the better you can wake up the next morning, start the day fresh, and again, metabolism, everything. For women, it's not about, oh, work out more, eat right for metabolism. You have to get your body to a healthier point. That's when it's gonna really boost your metabolism in an easier way, and all those other tactics are just gonna start clicking and working for you. So that's the stuff that I go through with women. So with adaptogens, with that rest piece in there, oftentimes it's the key is, you don't just take them in the morning, have another serving at night, especially when you're intermittent fasting. That way when you're sleeping, your body's still having that stress managed while you're sleeping and allowing it to repair better. Again, helping your metabolism more. Whew. Lots of very specific information. But again, these details make a big difference when you're trying to implement a tactic like intermittent fasting because so many women do it wrong. Right? I can't even tell you how many emails I get from women literally all over the world. Women in Australia, women in Brazil, they're like, listen, I I'm trying to intermittent fast, but I've been doing it for three weeks and I'm exhausted and I haven't lost a pound. You know, th this something's not right. And I'm like, yeah, because you're doing it like a man would and it's causing your body more stress. So these are the things to really focus on when you're intermittent fasting, especially if you're in menopause. Okay, so that's what I got for you guys tonight. Please let me know if you have any questions from here. I will put that link below for the webinar that I am doing. It is Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. Like I said, I live in Minnesota. I live in Minneapolis. Um, and so I'm gonna be doing the webinar 7 p.m. Central Time, but I'll put a link below for you to click sign up and get more information about this stuff for you to implement to get and keep a better result. So. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a great night. Thank you for the questions on the poopy coffee. <laughs> yes, and this is my, you know, I had football practice tonight. Um, so I did, I did, I didn't really wash, wash my hair, but I did wet it down. So that's why my hair looks fabulous, right? Fabulous. I got a little banged up at practice. We, we did some tackling, right? And I'm a big girl. So when I get taken down, it's a long way to the ground. Anyway, <laughs> all right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Share this with somebody if you found it helpful, and I hope you have a great rest of your night.